Hi, it's Nick again from exam.net. In this video, I'm going to explain how exams can be conducted and marked anonymously. This option is important since some national or statewide exams have requirements where teachers are not allowed to know the identity of the student while the exam is being marked. This feature is also helpful in situations where there are questions of concerns of bias. For the student, an anonymised exam appears and functions exactly the same as any other exam. They get the exam key, they type in their information, for example name and email, they write their answers and they submit them. So for the students, nothing is different. For teachers, conducting an anonymised exam feels very similar to a normal exam, but there are a few differences which I'll take you through now. Firstly, when you are creating an exam in the student information section, you have this option here to anonymise exam. This option is available for every type of exam you can create with exam.net. To enable it, simply select it. When you save your exam and return to the exam list, you'll notice this exam has a new icon in the status column. Anonymous exams show a secret agent icon here. If you forgot to select this setting, you can always click the edit icon, go back into the exam settings and turn this option on. You can even turn this option on in the middle of an exam, when students have already started writing. Just edit the exam and turn this option on as I just described. Exam.net will notice the change even in the middle of an exam. Now, let's bring up the monitoring view of an exam that I have in progress by clicking on this icon. At first glance, the monitoring view looks exactly the same as with a normal exam, but there are a few differences. You can see the list of students on the left-hand side as normal, including their actual names, and you can still support students by chatting with them. Clicking on a student's name allows you to see if that student has started their exam and if they are having any problems. As we all know, it can be really helpful to make sure all students have understood the task and started working on it. But when you select the Student Answer and History section for a particular student, you see the text, This exam is anonymised. Now, there is a way to check on students' progress in the exam, but now it is done anonymously. Above the list of students on the left-hand column is a new option, Monitoring Mode. Let's select that. Notice the students' names now get reordered and are changed to anonymous IDs. Let's click on a student ID. Now when we click on Student Answer in History, you can see the work in progress of this student updated in real time. If a particular student is not making progress, you can chat with them. Now, of course, in the chat window, the students' names have been replaced by their anonymous IDs, but in this way, you can still locate a student of concern via their ID and chat with them. OK, let me share a few practical tips as to how I use this function. When I start an exam, I don't turn on monitoring mode right away so that the students are not anonymous. This is the default setting, so you don't have to do anything. After starting the exam, I turn on the individual student accommodations for each student as I need to. For instance, this student needs help with text-to-speech. A few minutes in, I then take a look at each student to ensure they've started their exam. Once I'm satisfied that no students are stuck, I'll switch to monitoring mode so that I can anonymously view student progress through the rest of the exam. When the exam is finished and students have submitted their exams, I can now print, download or export the student's work as I normally would do. I'll export these as PDFs, one file per student, and I'll click here to put them into my Google Drive. Now let's open one up and have a look. As you can see, the student name has been replaced by their anonymous ID, so I don't know whose work I'm looking at. You can also see that a QR code has appeared up here in the top right corner. So, I now mark the student's work as I would normally. Once I've finished marking the exams and I'm ready to return the exams to students, there are two ways to identify each student. First, you can point your phone camera at this QR code. It will then tell you the name of the student for this exam. Then you can write their name on the exam so you know who to record a mark for and who to either hand back or email the exam to. Alternatively, you can click this button, Reveal Student Identities. Now this same button changes to Anonymous Identities and if you click it again, it brings up a list of all your students with their names next to their code. You may have also noticed that when I clicked Reveal Student Identities, this button came back, Send Copies to Student Emails. 
Since I co collected email addresses from the students, I can now automatically return marked exams via email. If you're not familiar with that option, see our video on marking and handing exam results. With that said, I will now disappear and look forward to seeing you in another video which I personally hope does not contain tongue twisters like anonymous, anonymously or anonymization. <laughs>